Hey y'all, this is Daryl. It's uh, July 17 today, about a uh, quarter to two in the afternoon. It's about 100 degrees outside. It's been about 100 degrees for the last three or four weeks. Hot, hot, hot. So I'm in the shop and I've got an old one today. This is an old Westinghouse motor. It's uh, had a pretty rough life, but uh, check this out. This is one from December of 1893 this old motor here um, it's got patent dates as far back as 1889 so this is one of the earlier uh, what we call a tank motor uh, a tank style motor and the cord's pretty ratty on it it's just all coming apart but believe it or not I may have to spin it to get it started because I don't believe the internal centrifugal start switch is working on it but we'll see but let's see if we can make it run all right, these run counterclockwise, so I'm gonna spin it and get it started. And it's actually running pretty quiet, considering the way it looks. Um, anyway, you can see the rotor spinning in there. <coughs> pretty doggone quiet. But anyway, we're gonna pull it apart and see what we can find out. Uh, the reason it's not wanting to start on its own, it's got an internal centrifugal start switch. I may have to rebuild that. And of course, while we're in it, we're gonna put new bearings in it and take a look at the rotor shaft. And we have to dress the rotor shaft or replace the rotor shaft, we'll do that too. But anyway, this is what's on my bench. It's what I'm working on now. And uh, y'all stand by and uh, we'll do a uh, part two of this thing here in just a bit. Hey y'all, I've been working on trying to get this stator out of this motor housing. Man, it was just rusted in there. And I've been working and working and working trying to get this thing out. You can see how just disintegrated that old uh, head wire was. And this thing is in pretty nasty shape, but I'm gonna do my best to get it back up and going again. So y'all hang in there. I'm pegging along on this thing. So we'll see what happens. All right, stay tuned. Hey y'all, just a quick little update here. I'm gonna to try to see if I can keep this under a minute. Uh, we've got the tank motor open and you see how badly rusted it is all inside of there. Uh, a lot of cleaning, uh, we're gonna to have to replace bearings for sure. But down in here, see how badly rusted it is down in there? All this, we're gonna to have to get cleaned up in here, all that goop down in there. Um, the rotor's in really bad shape. Uh, this thing's not opening and closing like it ought to. I think this one here is springing okay, but a lot it's gonna take a lot to clean this up. These screws here is rusted so bad. I don't think I can even get a screwdriver in there to get them out. So a lot of times these will break off and then you gotta drill them out and rethread. Uh, so it's gonna require a lot of time getting this thing cleaned up. Look at that rotor. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Y'all stay tuned. Hey y'all, so it's late Saturday afternoon. I've been out here working on this thing all day today. I've got the, I spent a lot of time on the rotor trying to get the rotor cleaned up and I think it's cleaned up real good. Uh, I still have to replace the springs. Uh, these are the old springs that was on there and I just don't trust those. I'm gonna replace the springs and I think we'll have the rotor ready to go. Uh, here's the old bearings that come out. I think this is the rear one here. Yep, that's the rear bearing. This is the front bearing. Uh, got the new ones in there. This is the front motor housing. Got the new one in there uh the rear motor housing and uh got the new bearing in the rear i still got to do some work i've got this cleaned up a little bit i'm going to spend some more time on this i want to re-insulate re-varnish these windings and i'm going to change out and replace this uh old head wire right here so i'm going to pick up on this again on monday so y'all stand by hey y'all it's monday and i've been uh continuing on with this old westinghouse tank motor here and uh I've got the rotor all cleaned up pretty good. Got new springs on there. Everything's working real good. I got a little bit of oil on it and um, everything's working real good about that. Let's see, I felt something come off of here. That's what it was right there. It goes right here. Um, and uh, I spliced a new head wire, got a new head wire on there and, um, and got this uh, uh, part of the start switch uh, cleaned up. I'm fixing to put the stator. Well, I'm gonna see if I can insulate these windings a little bit. We'll get that back in the motor housing and uh, see if we can get this thing put back together. And uh, I'll let y'all know how it turns out. All right, y'all hang on. Hey guys, so I've got the Westinghouse tank motor all back together. 
Um, I think the last video I showed you, I spliced some new head wire on there. I've got the motor actually turned upside down right now because the oil cups aren't in it. And I want to talk about that in a minute. I want to address something, but that'll be a different video. Uh, so the motor's actually turned upside down so I can put a couple of drops in the, uh, uh, where the oil cups go just so we can get lubrication to the bearing. I'm going to plug it in. I got it hooked up to a test lid. We're going to plug it in, let you see it start up and run. These motors do run counterclockwise. And as it starts up, you'll hear just a little bit of, uh, as the as centrifugal start switch opens as, as it gets up to speed. So, man, this thing runs so quiet, you can't even hear it running. I'm real, real pleased the way this thing turned out uh, compared to what we actually started with. So stand by just a second, all right? Okay, guys, I'm back. I just wanted to talk a little bit about these oil cups right here that go on these, these Westinghouse uh, motors. This is an oil cup. It's not a grease cup. And if your wick looks like this, you're not getting lubrication to the bearing. Uh, the wick needs to be uh, soft and uh, pliable, um, uh, abs absorbative, is that a word, absorbative? I've put just a little bit of three-in-one oil on this and you see how it turns it a little bit of a honey color as you put oil in it. And see, I've got oil on my finger there. Uh, that oil wicks up to the bearing. Here's a piece of fresh wick material. So if your wick doesn't, doesn't do this, uh, it's not soft and flexible and it's not getting lubrication to the bearing like it should. People put axle grease, all kind of stuff in these things, but these are oil cups. Okay guys, so I just took about 20 minutes and cleaned out these cups right here and uh, pulled the old springs and, and wick out and all that old gunk and goo and everything. And this is some of the junk that I got out from in there. It's uh, pretty pretty hard and nasty and definitely cannot wick through this wicking material here to get oil to the bearing. So I'm going to try to pronounce this word, this three-letter word, O-I-L. I just had a comment from a viewer. And for those of you that don't understand Carolina Hillbilly, that's oil, oil cups. They're oil cups. <laughs> I say oil cups. So anyway, I'm going to get these in there, get them, get them in the motor, and uh, get this thing boxed up. Thank you all for watching the video. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you learned a little something, and maybe it was a little entertaining to you too. Y'all take care.